Why is Madagascar, a country with so many opportunities to create an immense amount of wealth, so incredibly poor? In 1998, the largest sapphire deposit in the entire world was discovered in Madagascar, not to mention the billions of dollars worth of gold, cobalt, and titanium that has already been unearthed across the island. It's not just natural resources. Madagascar has the potential to become one of the largest tourist destinations in the entire world. It's home to the largest amount of biodiversity of any place on Earth, with stunning wildlife, beaches, mountains, and rivers. And it's not like this island is located in the middle of nowhere. In fact, it sits along one of the most important trade routes in the entire world. So new question, with all of these advantages, why isn't Madagascar fantastically rich? Because instead of being wealthy, this island nation ranks as one of the poorest countries in the entire world. And when I say poor, I mean like really poor. Over 75% of the entire population lives off of less than $2 per day. Barely 10% of Madagascar's residents have access to electricity. Its GDP per capita is lower than countries that have recently gone through hyperinflation like Zimbabwe. And it's even lower than war-torn Somalia and Yemen. So, how on earth does this island, with all of its incredible geographic advantages, have an economy that's somehow worse than this? And a huge reason is that political chaos has gripped Madagascar. The country didn't have a peaceful transition of power for decades. Its first president was ousted for being too pro-French, while its second president was effectively overthrown by the military. And its third president was assassinated after less than a week in power. Now, amid this political chaos emerged a new Marxist regime under the new leadership of Dieter Radisseraka, a Madagascar naval officer who sought to transform the country into a communist state in line with the Soviet Union. And from 1975 to 1991, he governed the country as a socialist dictator. After nationalizing most industries, censoring the press, and eliminating nearly all political and economic freedoms across the country, Madagascar's economy began to collapse. In the 1970s, the country was still rather poor, but in the lead up to the socialist revolution, Madagascar had actually been getting slowly richer over time. But after decades of single party communist rule, that was all destroyed. So much so that even 30 years later, the country still hasn't fully recovered. But that's only half the picture, because the biggest problem with Madagascar isn't that the socialist regime from the 1970s and 80s ruined the country beyond repair. After all, there's plenty of other nations in the world that also suffered under communist dictatorships that have since become incredibly rich. But one of the biggest reasons why is that after experimenting with authoritarian socialism, the country then decided to experiment with democratic socialism. In fact, Madagascar went so far as to elect its previous socialist dictator after the transition to democracy in the 1990s. And this sad trend has lasted to this very day with the country continuing to elect political demagogues who insist that the only way to improve the nation is to grant even more vast powers to the government over things like housing, education, transportation, food, water, electricity, and more. Which reminds me of a Frederick Hayek quote, perhaps the fact that we have seen millions voting themselves into complete dependence on a tyrant has made our generation understand that to choose one's government is not necessarily to secure one's freedom.